Available Space. This is a tune written by Ry Cooter, appeared on, uh, I believe it was his first album, the one with the uh, Airstream on the, on the cover, and uh, covered a few years later by Leo Kotke. Um, I had a student interested in this a while ago, and I thought this is a great, it's been a long time since I've done a bottleneck slide tune in Open G, but that's what we have here with this. And um, I listened to a, uh, Leo's version uh, and a couple of little pieces of live ones that we had. I have what here, what I have here is kind of a compilation of what I heard in all of those things. We really hear this opening really, really clean. <laughs> So that's kind of one of the distinctive parts about the song. The other is, every time it goes, it's kind of a 12-bar blues progression, but it's 14 bars long. So it's a little off balance. But um, it, it's got this these licks over a G chord, then into a C chord. And then expects we expect you to get back to a G chord in measure 7, and it does, but only for one beat. And that is one of the main little hooks in this song, that it keeps bouncing back to that C chord, chord four in the key, um, unexpectedly. And hangs there for two more measures before it finally comes back to chord one. So there's one of our odd measures. We got five measures in the second line. And then we start the third line, which is on chord five to four. The same bounce back to a C chord before it comes back. So this 14 bar blues is just got a second, a fifth measure in line two and a fifth measure in line three, and then a few little variations on it. And, and every time Leo would play this, it would come out quite a bit different. So and he's he's changed a lot of the phrasing. So we're sticking with Rise phrasing all the way through. Um, I have I've, I've got four three different parts written out three different verses. The first one is what we hear at the beginning. I have another one that's more out of a John Fahey type lick. And the same bounce. Always to that C. A couple really important things about playing with a slide. First of all, the one I have is contoured a little bit. It's 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 not flat, straight, and and that makes it fit the steel strings of a guitar much better, and it makes it easy for me to be able to get all six strings clean. So I really recommend getting a, this one is copper, I guess, or brass, and um, makes it really easy to play. A couple of just important slide techniques. You have to learn to keep it parallel to the frets. You can't play it like this. Everything will be out of tune. And you have to learn to use heavy vibrato. Really lightly touch, just shaking your hand. Now when I'm doing this, I'm not even really touching the back of the neck with my thumb. My whole arm is loose. So I'm playing the, the, the chord, the bar, the C chord is of course at the fifth fret. And since we're in G tuning, the, the root of each chord is always going to be on the fifth string. So when I'm doing stuff on a G chord, all these melody notes that happen up at the twelfth fret when I go to a C chord it's all at the fifth and the D chords are all at the seventh. Now that means sometimes if you can swing it you could use the low sixth string as a bass note for there. So I have the bar partially off of the uh, the strings up there, just playing the the top strings. So, um, okay. So I've got tab here to um, an A, a B, and a C section. And in the rise version, we really hear the A section twice. And that's what we'll talk about that as we get into it. But um, uh, coming up. A lesson on a hybrid version of Ry Cooter's and Leo Kotke's takes on available space.